today we'll solve the consecutive filing years SQL question. We've taken this question from the book Ace the Data Science Interview by Nick Singh. I'll add the link to the book as well as this question in the description below. So let's start off. The question says, Intuit, a company known for its tax filing products like TurboTax and QuickBooks, offers multiple versions of these products. We have to write a query that identifies the user IDs of individuals who have filed their taxes using any version of TurboTax for three or more consecutive years. Each user is allowed to file taxes once a year using a specific product and display the output in the ascending order of the user IDs. So if we look at the table that we have, we have the file taxes table with the following uh, column names. So let's just directly look at the example input. We have the filing ID, we have the user ID, we have the filing date and the product used to file the taxes. Now let's take into example the user ID 1. So the user ID 1 filed in 2019 using TurboTax. He filed again in 2020 using TurboTax Deluxe and again in 2021 using TurboTax Online. So the example output is user ID, which is only one. Now let's see why. So the explanation says, User 1 has consistently filed their taxes using TurboTax for three consecutive years. User 2 is excluded from the results because they missed filing in the third year. Okay, if we look at the user 2 over here, we have the information that the user 2 filed in 2020, in 2021 as well, but again, yeah, he missed in 2022. Okay, and uh, for user 3, they transitioned to using QuickBooks in their third year. So if you look at user 3, they filed in 2020 using TurboTax Online, they filed in 2021 using the TurboTax Online, but when they filed it in 2022 for the consecutive third year, they used QuickBooks instead. So they are not counted. And for the user ID 4, they filed only once. So yeah, um, they are also not counted. So the example output will contain only the user ID 1 because it's the only ID which filed for three consecutive years using a TurboTax product. Okay, so how do we approach this problem? We need the filing date and we need to check for three consecutive years of filing. So let's see. First of all, for a sanity check, let's just see what the table looks like. So we do a select all from filed taxes if you run the code okay you have the filing id the user id the filing date and the product used okay perfect the thought process behind this uh, question is that if we could add one column which is let's say assuming that you know the filing date the earliest filing date is this column the year after this like the year next could be added as one more column and then the next year could add it could be like one more column. What I mean uh, over here is that what if for each user ID that we have, these three rows are converted to different columns instead. And then we could just simply compare the years between, you know, the different dates that we have. For a better understanding, I'll just start doing what I am trying to explain right now. So I'll use the um, the lead function uh, to just push these filing dates up by one row for each of the user ID. So I'll do a lead of the filing date and I'll do it for each user ID. I'll partition it by the user ID and while doing so i'll make sure i order it by the filing date that means this date column will be first sorted in an ascending order and then pushed up so if i order it by the filing date let's see what we get okay perfect so what we have over here is the original filing date we have 
April 14, 2019. And the next row for this user is now corresponding over here, which is April 15th, 2020. So we have the first year over here and the second year over here. We can, you know, let's say, call it as year two. So we have filing date, which is year one. We have this column as year two. And similarly, because we want it for three consecutive years, we can create one more column and that would be a result of pushing this original column up by two rows instead of just one. So to do that, simply we do a copy paste of this and by default the value is one, we can do a lead of two over here to push the row up two times and we can call it year three. And if we run this, perfect. What we have over here is if we look at only the user ID one, we have all these three rows into columns. Now the first row is the filing date, which we can use as it is. This second year of filing is over here in year two. And this third date of filing is over here in year three. And because we did a partition by the user ID, that is, we are just pushing these rows up based on each user. We are grouping it by the user. We have null values over here. So this is perfect. Just to make it more clear, we can just call this filing date function as year one instead. Okay, I missed a comma. Okay, now what we have is for each user ID, we have the year one of filing, the year two of filing, the year three of filing. The thought process is we just calculate that whether the difference of filing between year three and year two is equal to one. And also the difference of filing between year two and year one is also one, which will make sure that these three years are consecutive in nature. But before that, we need to make sure that the user is using the product TurboTax instead. And to do that, we have the column product and we see that there are a bunch of TurboTax desktop, TurboTax online and TurboTax deluxe, etc, etc. And also we have QuickBooks desktop, QuickBooks desktop, QuickBooks online. So we only need to filter out the rows in which the user is using TurboTax as a product. As the question says, write a query that identifies the user IDs of individuals who have filed their taxes using any version of TurboTax. So simply, we can do a where clause and we can do where product like, and in the like, we can add a percentage sign and say turbo tax and again a percentage sign. What this does is it finds any instant of instance of the word turbo tax in the product column and filters for that. Like let's say, you know, we have turbo tax desktop. It will filter for that. We have turbo tax online. It will filter for turbo tax. Like it's just finding the word turbo tax in any part of the string. Like if, even if we had like, you know, uh, let's say uh, Deluxe TurboTax Online ABC, something like that. Because it has TurboTax in it, the like function will filter it out. So that was just an example. If we run it, perfect. Now we have filtered out all the user IDs and the filing information where the product is TurboTax. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to save this result that we have in a new table and this and, and then just simply check whether each of this year is a consecutive year. So saving this 
entire result as a CTE, as a common table expression, we can do something like uh, with filing year table as this. Um, so what this does is it helps us access each of these columns using the reference of this table. And if I just do a select all from like just a sanity check, select all from filing year table, we should get the exact same result. Perfect. Okay. I just rearrange this. Okay. Now what we want is we want to extract the year from these columns. Sorry. Yeah. From, from these columns, subtract it, make sure that, you know, they are consecutive and the way that we are going to do is do this is that let's say year three is 2021 year two is 2020 and year one is 2019 we will write a statement like a condition uh, and we'll make sure that year three minus year two is equal to one and year two minus year one is equal to one. That is 2021 minus 2020 is equal to one. And also 2020 minus 2019 is equal to one. This will make sure that these three years, 2019, 2020 and 2021 are all consecutive. Now, how, how do we do that? with an SQL. We can use the extract function to extract the year from the column names. And simply, I just give an example first. If I add a column, I can write extract year from, let's say, year three. If I do that, I will get a column called extract and it has extracted only 2021 from this entire date time column. So now we can use this statement inside our where clause to filter out the consecutive years. And how do we do that? We'll take this statement. Let's say where we'll take the statement where year three extract year from year three minus extract year from year two is equal to one. So what this will do is this will extract 2021 and this will extract 2020 because it's year two over here. And we'll check if, if the year three and year two difference is one and extract this extract year two minus let's make sure the, the spacing is correct minus extract year from year one is equal to one if i try to run this we're selecting all from the filing year table where the years are consecutive if i run this I get these as my answers and just to check the user ID one, the year one is 2019, year two is 2020, the year three is 2021. Perfect. For user ID five, year one is 2019, year two is 2020, year three is 2021. For user ID six, we have two rows. Year one is 2016. Year two is 2017, year three is 2018. And user ID six again files starting 2020, then 2021, then 2022. And the question says, write a query that identifies the user IDs of individuals who have filed their taxes using any consecutive years. And um, we would only want user IDs that is distinct user IDs. We, we, we don't want the user ID six to appear twice and also we want to uh, arrange these by the ascending order of user ids 
So simply we have the answer in front of us. From this entire table, we can simply use the user ID. But a distinct of the user ID to give us the unique values. And also we need to order our result by the ascending order of user IDs. So we can simply do order by user ID. If we run the code, we have three users who have consecutively filed taxes using TurboTax for consecutive three years. And if I just submit it, I hope you like this and see you in the next.